Hi, I'm Paul Perdue, and I am the infrastructure nerd. And I'm Mary Jo Boyd, and I'm a legal technologist. So there are certain times when you need to get everybody out of tabs, practice master everything in order to do certain month-end, certain maintenance-oriented functions. But Paul, wait a minute. You got to get users out, and we have to work. So you know those lawyers, gotta... they really want to get back into the software. Yeah. Well, over the years, we've developed some best practices for minimizing the amount of time that. Practice Master or Tabs is unavailable, and for getting people out safely. Can you show us how to do that? Sure. Let's start with a definition. There are two types of exclusive access that you may need to get to a program. There's regular exclusive and super exclusive. Regular exclusive means that if I go into Practice Master and tell it that I want to do some file maintenance, it's going to tell me all the other people that are in Practice Master, but it's not going to show me people that are in other programs because I don't need to kick them out. I only need to kick people out of Practice Master. On the other hand, if I go into Tabs and say that I want to renumber a timekeeper, that's something I need to have super exclusive access to in order to do. And so when I go into this, it tells me I need to get everybody out of Practice Master, even though I'm in tabs. So you can see that with super exclusive access, in, I'm giving you the example in tabs, I still need to get people out of Practice Master, even though what I'm doing is in tabs. If this were a regular exclusive access function within tabs, uh, it would go ahead and do it because there's nobody else in tabs. So first you need to know who is going to be kicked out. Now, the next thing to understand is you need to tell them. We always warn people at least a couple hours ago uh, before with a, an email that says, uh, we're going to have Practice Master shut down or we're going to have Practice Master and Tabs and Accounting shut down, let's say at noon today. And then at noon is when we start the actual kicking out of the people. So how do we kick people out? If you are in Practice Master or Tabs and they are platinum, you can simply say, log off users. When you do that, it will give you a, an ability to specify why and how long you want to give them to get out. I usually give them two minutes. Sometimes we give them five, but usually it's two. Um, and I usually say something under reason. It will default to whatever you were trying to do, which in our instance was renumber timekeeper. I say something like quick planned maintenance. And I might even uh, go into uh, back in 10 minutes. This is what's going to pop up on their screens to warn them that they need to get out. Now let's show what that looks like because it's going to happen to me. As you notice here, I am currently in Practice Master at the system menu. I need to get out. So it's going to tell me and Patty that we need to get out. And here's what comes up for the user. P. Purdue requested that you log off Practice Master. Why? Quick plan maintenance back in 10 minutes. Please save any work before Practice Master automatically closes in 1 minute and 49 seconds. What that means is that if I don't and it continues to count down and I get to zero, Practice Master is going to shut itself down no matter what I'm doing. So it's giving me two minutes to get out, save anything I need, and exit the software. If I don't, if I've gone to lunch already, if I'm on the phone and I'm not paying attention, uh, whatever, it's just going to automatically log me out. Now, I'm going to cancel this because I want Patty to be able to continue working. And uh, in a minute, we'll show actually what happens when you get logged out. Now, if you're not in practice, if you're not in platinum and you go to do something that's going to kick people out, instead of getting this screen that we got, um, when you click log off users, you'll get an ad for platinum. So if you don't have Platinum, you can't do this log off users feature. You'll get everything else. You'll be able to, you won't be able to notify users or log them out. You'll get everything else. It'll tell you people are in. It'll let you um, wait until they get out. But then you have to go around and get them off the system. Now, here's what a lot of people tend to want to do. They want to come into view, active user list, perhaps look at all systems. And they want to start kicking people out by using reset. And you'll notice that if we use reset, you have to specify with a check that you understand that you've verified that everybody's really not in the software, you've attempted to close the program on their computer, and you understand that if you do this and it happens to be at the exact wrong moment, 
and there's actually a user in there and maybe they're saving a record at the exact moment that you reset them, you could ruin all your data files. So don't do that. We do not recommend doing this if you really don't know that they're out. Now, occasionally you'll have a user that remains logged in even though they're out. Their computer's shut down. There's no way they can be in Practice Master. Then, if you don't have Platinum and you need to use this Reset Users, then it's okay. But only do it when it's okay. Don't do it just because you're upset because Bob didn't listen to you and he's two floors up and you're not going to go up there and he's not answering his phone. Well, okay, you know, you're going to run the risk, if you do it, of destroying all your data files. If he's in the middle of saving a calendar entry or saving a fee entry at the exact moment that you reset him, you could come back in and find that you now have to restore from a backup. So don't do it. Now, what about this? If I go in to do whatever it is I'm going to do, and I'm going to renumber timekeepers again, you'll notice, and I keep skipping the backup. We don't recommend skipping the backup. But here's why. Uh, here's why I am skipping it. Once you get into this screen, you have initiated a lockout. Users will be prevented from starting any conflicting activities until you complete or cancel your process. That is true even during the hot backup that, that would normally not keep people out. So we recommend that if you're going to do a backup first, which you should always, that you do it from here. File, hot backup. When you start a hot backup this way, and we'll go ahead and let this complete because it'll only take about 30 seconds. When you start a hot backup this way, prior to doing whatever it is that you're going to do that's going to kick people out, instead of using the one that you encounter on the way into doing whatever it is that you're going to do to kick people out, then you are not locking users out of Practice Master or Tabs or whatever while you do the hot backup. Whereas if you do it on the way in, depending on the version of software that you have uh, and, and whether it's been updated lately, uh, you may be locking people out. So we don't want that to happen. Now here, it only takes oh, well, 28 seconds to do hot backup. But I have clients where it takes 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes to do hot backup, simply because they have a much more significant set of data, more fee archive, more whatever, and it takes longer. So that's why we come into file. Get out of here and show you again. File, hot backup because that lets people continue to work in the software while you're doing backup, then we go into whatever it is that we want to do. Once that happens you, and the backup's complete, then you can go ahead, go into what you want to do. Don't do the hot backup here. That'll just delay how, um, you, you already did it, that'll delay the situation. And then go ahead and log off users. And I'm going to go ahead and make it say one minute because I want you to see what happens. Here we get this message. Patty's going to get kicked out of stuff. I'm going to get kicked out of this one thing. It's telling me that I need to get out of Practice Master, and I'm not going to do it. I want you to see what happens. Um, it's not until I actually exit Practice Master that I would be able to click on OK and, and go on you know, reading me email or doing something that doesn't involve SDI software. But I'm going to ignore that. We're going to pretend that I'm gone at lunch. And when we get down to this 30 seconds from now, it's going to log me out. Now, once you get done with this, uh, whatever it is that you're doing, renumbering a timekeeper, data file integrity checks, file maintenance and practice master, it's very important that you go immediately to whatever machine. For me at my clients, it's usually the administrator's machine because I don't have the ability to send mail this way, and send an email to all users saying Practice Master is back, Tabs is back, whatever it is that you shut them out of, and here we go. You were logged off of Practice Master by P. Purdue for the following way using Quick Plan Maintenance OK. Now, of course, we wouldn't see this in the background if we were really just getting logged out. I happen to be doing both things from the same machine. I happen to be the guy that's not logging out when he should, and I'm also the guy that's causing the logout to happen. So I get to this. And when I'm done, if, if somebody else tries to go into Practice Master for some other reason, um, let's do that. Let's go into Practice Master. And it says, Paul Purdue, a Tabs user, is currently re using Renumber Timekeeper. You will not be allowed to continue until the conflicting activity is complete. What do you want to do? Exit or wait? Resetting the user again is something we don't want to do. So we would just wait and, and it would let us into the software when he's done. So let's do that. So we'll wait here 
I'm going to go over and simulate being done by canceling out of here. As soon as I do that, Practice Master recognizes it, and here we are. It releases me, lets me into the software, I can do what I want. Now, what you've got to understand, though, is everybody doesn't know that because most of them are, are not trying to go back into the software right away. They are simply waiting for uh, you to tell them. So you need to go to the machine or, or your machine and send an email to everyone saying Practice Master is available again. Otherwise, a half hour, an hour later, you'll get some angry attorneys or paralegals or legal assistants calling you and saying, when is it going to be available again? So don't assume that you know, some, some people are going to try and go back in right away and they'll know when you're done. But don't assume that. It doesn't work that way for everybody. And some people are going to be patiently waiting at their desks and you need to tell them. So there you have it. A couple things you can do to make sure that people are out for as short a period of time as possible and that your data is as safe as can be. And that's one more way that you can worry less. And practice more.